What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and this is the first video on what is going to be a really, really, really long deep dive or regular dive into Neil Young's studio catalog. I think we're somewhere above 40 at this point, um, close to a year. Uh, so we're going to do every studio album. Then after that, we'll actually start the deep diving. I'm doing this because Chronicles 3 recently dropped about a month and a half ago. And uh, I love Neil Young. Uh, he is one of those artists like Dylan... <clears throat> like probably more so than Dylan, to be honest. Um, man, I like Dylan, like Zappa, where every album I've listened to at least a half dozen times. You know, there's a handful I don't listen to anymore, but I, I gave them a chance at one point. Um, I think there's pretty much something on almost every album that's worth checking out. So, um, but I've never actually sat down and listened to them all from one all the way through to what's been recently released. <clears throat> so that'll be interesting to just do that. So I'm going to do that, and in each video, I'm going to review the album, uh, I will rank the album, um, and then I'm also, also going to rank the songs, um, just because in re-listening, re-listening, re-re-listening, in listening again to the debut, it was, I had fun sort of figuring out the order. Um, pretty much knew which the top five were and which the bottom five were, but it was nice to kind of actually put them into place. So anyways, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, Neil Young, one a week. Uh, devote myself to revisiting this entire catalog. I'm excited about it. Um, but yeah, all right, that's all I got for now. And now let's get into this album right there, The Debut, 1968. Um, not really a new artist on the scene. He had been around in Buffalo Springfield. Um, this is very much, I like to think of somewhat of like, a, I don't know if a sampler is exactly maybe the right way, but maybe like a preseason. That's what it is. It's sort of a basketball season's happening now. And uh, my team, the Spurs, uh, we get a lot of weird lineups, right? Like Popovich, our coach, is like, we're going to work on this in a preseason, see if this group works together. We're going to pair these people, um, you know, and see what works. So when we get to the actual season, <clears throat> we maybe have a better idea of how to win. And so, again, like we used to. Um, and I kind of feel like that's what this is, mainly because there's one sort of thread in here that kind of does not get picked up for the most part ever in his, um, for the rest of his catalog. And so it's interesting that it's tried out twice on a debut, uh, that being instrumental tracks, not a lot of in instrumental tracks in the, in the Neil Young catalog. Um, so it's interesting that two of them, um, appear on, uh, the debut album, but we also get like fuzzy rockers and the loner. Uh, we get, you know, you're indulgent <clears throat> in a good way. I mean, indulgent, uh, acoustic sort of rambling diatribes like the last trip to Tulsa. You get a little bit of country action. You get a little pop, psych pop action. Uh, you get all the things that you kind of would expect from Neil Young at some point in his career. Um, I think it's a great listen. Um, I think the first half is much stronger than the second half. I think the first half is like a pretty well-balanced, almost perfect like side of music. <clears throat> and then the second side, I think is slightly weaker. There's a couple sort of just like, I guess filler tracks would be the word. I enjoy them at this point, but I don't know if I'd ever drop them on a playlist or anything like that. Uh, but then I think arguably the best track is the last song on side two. So it's not in no way a waste of a side. Um, Side one opens with an instrumental, The Emperor of Wyoming. And I think the neat thing about this song is it's got this, like, the strings are, like, carrying the melody. There's, like, the string section that carries the melody. And there's one thing that Neil Young sort of, like, disavowed this album to some degree because there was a lot of overdubs, and he did not like that. You know, it's not something he would want to ever do again for the most part. <clears throat> so it was, like, he kind of disavowed that aspect of it, but... I don't know, at this point in time, at its worst, it just sounds like overproduced late 60s kind of pop, which I still think is a pretty good genre. So there's really no complaints for me. Um, Emperor of Wyoming maybe fits in that one. There's just kind of, you know, a quirky little musical number with this awesome like <clears throat> string led melody. But the cool thing about the melody is you can clearly imagine Neil Young singing this melody like just make up your own words make it about the emperor of wyoming that's a weird enough topic for neil and the melody that is played by these strings it is 100 a neil young melody like you could almost hear his voice um 
So it makes it work. Um, it's still kind of a weird thing to have a Neil Young album open like this, um, but I don't know. It kind of works for me. The Loner Follows, just a really nice classic, you know, fuzzed out guitar rocker, great lyrics, nice little sort of psych pop interludes between the kind of just make it a little more interesting, kind of put it in its era of the late 60s, but in a good way. Um, uh, then we have If I Could Have Her Tonight, um, a really nice song, um, sort of a um, country-ish, kind of sweet, really good sort of sweet little song uh, with like little elements of like 60s psych pop working in there. Um, we get I've Been Waiting For You, which just has this big, almost like, dun, like big dramatic like pop song energy that when we drop into the song kind of reminds me of Tom Petty, like maybe something Tom Petty would have dropped on an album in like the late 70s or maybe the early 80s. More like it could be like a, uh, like a, a damn the torpedoes or even a long after dark like deep cut, um, great kind of dirty guitar solo in it, uh, really good song, um, and then a song I've always have to absolutely loved, uh, the old laughing lady, um, kind of reminds me like it's flirting with like a like a Je Jefferson airplane ballad, you know, elements of little psych elements kind of a mysterious quality about it, very folky, but with this awesome middle section with these great harmonies that come in that just kind of just seem to float in from like, no, like out of the out of the blue and they're just here kind of occupying space and then kind of float away. Um, cool song, just kind of weird little Neil Young kind of 60s psych diversion thing, but kind of based in his folkiness and I don't know, a fun little journey. Um, but an absolutely great side of music, an instrumental, a rocker, a little country action, a little big pop action, and then some weird, mysterious, folky psych. Fantastic. Um, side two opens up with a string quartet from Whiskey Boot Hill, which is a string quartet playing like a minute plus of just, I don't know, kind of throwaway string quartet type music that does maybe seem like it could be the soundtrack to like, something that involved a whiskey boot hill, kind of country-ish. Um, we get Here We Are in the Years, um, which is like a nice piano ballad, tinges of country in this. Um, we get What Did You Do to My Life, um, which has this really like kind of low key guitar action winding through it. Um, some like healthy 60s pop elements um, that are in there. Um, I've Loved Her So Long follows, um, which just has a uh, nice bass in like keyboard. I think maybe it's an organ sort of intro action, very ballady, some really nice backing vocals that come in. Neil Young's vocal performance on this has a very aching, aching quality. Like he, he's loved her so long, but it doesn't feel like, like he's satisfied. There's definitely something missing and lacking there. There's an ache in his voice. Um, and then we get the last song, uh, The Last Trip to Tulsa, which I just think is absolutely fantastic. This long meandering, it's like what, close past eight minutes long? Nine and a half minutes long. Um, uh, apparently, I think it was uh, completely off the top of the dome type thing, improvised, freestyling, just him like, what is the word I'm looking for? Stream of consciousness type stuff. But it's got enough little just weird little Neil Young lines that you're like, is that deep? Is that not deep? Either way, I don't care. Like, I can imagine that it is deep. Um, really just, it's a neat little indulgent, just him and a guitar playing and doing that Neil Young thing. For me, one of the few artists where you just, a microphone, a guitar, and the voice, and I'm happy. Um, but yeah, and that closes out the album. I think pretty strong. Um, obviously, I'm not going to rank this one because it's number one at this point, but I don't think it's a bad album. I think you can tell the experience of being in Buffalo Springfield has sort of helped him. He's a confident songwriter at this point. Um, I definitely think you can understand who Neil Young is. Um, a lot of the threads, the country aspect that, you know, on the beach owes half of its existence to like the last trip to Tulsa. Um, you know, just so much of this, just you can see how it would like play out uh, in the rest of the career if you, if you know his albums. So um not a bad debut at all. Actually, I'm kind of fun. Um, if I were to rank the songs, um, the song ranking would look like this. 
Um, string quartet at the bottom. I just think it's kind of a throwaway number. And then, like, most of these next songs are on side two. Uh, Here We Are in the Years, you know, a little ballad country stuff. Um, um, uh, I've Loved Her So Long, kind of low-key ballad, If I Could Have Her Tonight, uh, kind of country sweet. That's one of the ones that is on the first side of the album. Um, uh, what Did You Do to My Life, um, which is that nice low-key guitar, which I like. Uh, the Emperor of Wyoming starts off strong. Like, I think it's a strong little instrumental, and that melody is like, it, it sounds like a Neil Young melody. Um, I've Been Waiting for You, the nice sort of Tom petty -esque guitar song, The Loner, which is, I think, the obvious. Like, if I had to, like, put together a compilation album of his strongest tracks, I would probably put The Loner over The Last Trip to Tulsa. To me, I like that, The Last Trip to Tulsa acoustic stuff in it, but I understand that The, the Loner is more of a significant, I think, statement as an artist, especially in this is his first solo album, where The Last Trip to Tulsa... It's generally one of those I think people either like it or don't. They're not too much in between. Um, but yeah, The Loner, fantastic. Old Laughing Lady. Uh, then Last Trip for me is is the winner on this album. But yeah, that's his first album, man. Neil Young's first album. Way back in 1968. He's still making albums today. Um, absolutely fantastic. Um, I know Ry Cooter played on this for some of the songs. Um, Jim Messine is on here. Um, so... Some a couple good. Uh, don't know how much they're on here. Cooter's on a couple songs, um, but yeah, man, it's a uh, a fun little intro to the world of Neil Young, and it gets ridiculously better as we make our way out of the '60s and through the '70s. So, anyways, that's all I got. Excited to start this. Let me know your thoughts on Neil Young on this album, all that kind of stuff. And uh, subscribe, like, share, comment, and go listen to this album. It's just, it's really good late 60s folk, pop, psych, country. Yeah, Neil Youngness. All right, that's it. Peace. Talk to you later.